we have seen what assets and bases are and how we classify them. Now let's see how we can prepare these assets and bases. The first way is by direct synthesis. So if you have to prepare HCl, that is hydrochloric acid, we take, we take hydrogen gas and chlorine gas. So by the direct combination of the two, we can form HCl. Similarly, we can prepare the other acids by direct synthesis. So for HPR, we take hydrogen and bromine. For H2S, we take hydrogen and sulfur. So we can prepare the acids by direct synthesis. Similarly, we can also prepare the bases by direct synthesis. So if you have to prepare sodium oxide, we take sodium and oxygen gas. So by the direct combination of the two, we get sodium oxide. Similarly, for magnesium oxide, we take magnesium and oxygen. So the direct combination of the two gives us the base magnesium oxide. The other way to prepare the acids is by the displacement reaction. So if we take NaCl, which is a salt, we make it react with an acid H2SO4. So in NaCl we know this is plus, this is minus Na plus Cl minus. In this we have H plus SO4 2 minus. So we know the unlike charges attract. So we get Na plus reacts with SO4 2 minus to form Na2 SO4. And Cl minus reacts with H plus to form HCl. So by the displacement reaction from one salt we get other salt. And from one acid, we can prepare another acid. Similarly, if you have NaNO3, we make it react with H2SO4. We have Na plus NO3 minus and again H plus SO4 2 minus. So what do we get? Na plus reacts with SO4 2 minus to form Na2SO4 and NO3 minus reacts with H plus to form HNO3. So from one salt we get another salt and from one acid H2SO4 we get another acid that is nitric acid. So this is another way of preparing the acids. Complete the following reaction. We have magnesium chloride and sulfuric acid. So what do we get? We know in magnesium chloride we have Mg2 plus and Cl minus and in this case we have H plus SO4 2 minus. So we get Mg reacts with SO4 2 minus to form MgSO4 and H plus reacts with Cl minus to form HCl. Now if you have to balance the equation, we see two atoms of H and two atoms of chlorine and there we have only one. So we multiply this by two. So now we have two atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of chlorine. So this is the balanced chemical equation and in this case what do you observe? From one salt we get another salt and from one acid that is sulfuric acid we can prepare another acid which is HCl. So likewise, we can use this method of displacement to prepare bases as well. So if we have a salt, FeCl3, we make it react with NaOH, which is a base. What do we get? By the simple displacement reaction, this is plus, this is minus, this is plus, this is minus. So we get displacement reaction, Fe reacts with OH. to form FeOH3 and Na reacts with Cl to form NaCl. Now let's balance the equation. We see three OH radicals or we can say that there are three atoms of oxygen and there are three atoms of hydrogen. So in this case we multiply this by three and now we have three atoms of sodium. So let's multiply this by three. Now there are three atoms of chlorine. 
In this case, we have three atoms of chlorine. So, the equation is balanced. And what do you observe? We had one salt and one base. When we make them react, we get another base and another salt. So, from one salt and a base, by the displacement reaction, we get another base and another salt. Similarly, if we take the next reaction, we have copper sulphate and NaOH. So, we get this and this displacement. So, we get copper, copper hydroxide and we get Na2SO4. Now, if we balance the equation, there are two atoms of sodium and now there are two atoms of hydrogen which are balanced in this case. If you look at sulphate, we have one atom of sulphur and four atoms of oxygen in this case plus two atoms that is six, two plus four atoms of oxygen which is six. So, the equation is balanced and again we observe that from one salt and one base, by a displacement reaction, we get another salt and another base. When you open a can of cold drink, what do you observe? You observe that as soon as you open it, bubbles escape. These bubbles are of carbon dioxide. In these cold drinks, carbonic acid is dissolved. This carbonic acid, which is H2CO3, is not stable. It is a very unstable acid, so it quickly decomposes to form CO2 and H2O. So, as soon as you open the bottle of cold drink or a can of cold drink, you see the bubbles of CO2 escaping. This is because carbonic acid is a very unstable acid. It quickly decomposes to form carbon dioxide and water. So, if we take a reaction of magnesium carbonate reacting with sulfuric acid, we have one salt, one acid. When they combine, they give another salt that is MgSO4 and carbonic acid. We know that carbonic acid is a very unstable acid. It forms CO2 plus H2O. So, the final equation that we get is magnesium carbonate reacting with sulfuric acid to form another salt which is MgSO4 and instead of forming the carbonic acid, it forms carbon dioxide and water. So, whenever we have a carbonate, the carbonates always give the carbon dioxide gas. In this case, we have magnesium carbonate, it gives CO2 gas. Now, whenever there is a non-metallic oxide, and water reacts with the non-metallic oxide, we always get the corresponding acid. Let's see some examples. We have sulfur dioxide. This is a non-metallic oxide. It reacts with water to form sulfurous acid. Sulfur trioxide reacts with water to form sulfuric acid. Carbon dioxide reacts with water to form carbonic acid. And N2O5, nitrogen pentoxide, reacts with water to form nitric acid. So, all the non-metallic oxides react with water to form the corresponding acids. And when there are metallic oxides, the metallic oxides react with water to form the corresponding metal hydroxides, which are bases. So, the non-metallic oxides, they react with water to form acids and the metallic oxides, let's see some examples. The metallic oxide Na2O reacts with water to form the corresponding hydroxide, which is sodium hydroxide. Similarly, potassium oxide gives potassium hydroxide and calcium oxide gives calcium hydroxide. So, all the metallic oxides on reaction with water form the corresponding metal hydroxides which are bases. So, the different types of reactions that we have seen, we have seen that when a salt reacts with an acid, it forms another salt and another acid. Similarly, when a base reacts with a salt, 
it forms another base and another salt by the displacement reaction. When a non-metallic oxide, it reacts with water, it forms the corresponding acid. And a metallic oxide, when it reacts with water, it forms the corresponding metal hydroxide, which is a base. So these are the different types of reactions which are used for the formation of acids and bases.